Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. Looking sexy, feeling good, getting ready to train. Thought I would chat with you guys and gals briefly about uh, protein timing. You know, this is a topic that has been um, heavily overrated as far as timing goes. Um, and, and we do have quite a few studies, uh, you know, in the lab showing that when protein uh, meals are very, very large, that the muscle protein synthesis gets extended a really long time. And they get extended a really long time. Um, and what's interesting is that the people who argue against this most have financial ties and in, in things that would uh, benefit from timing. You know, and, and that is something that we have to think about when it comes to, to a lot of this research. Okay? And I'm not going to name names, I'm not going to start fights, uh, but there's definitely a person uh, you know, who I've had conflict with in the past who tries to argue, yeah, the timing matters more, you can't, you know, do, uh, you know, you people are talking about of taking very large amounts that does matter. And of course, keep in mind, this person pushed BCAAs and leucine and everything, oh, we need this leucine frequently. Um, and it turns out that BCAAs and meta-analysis are completely useless for muscle growth, muscle protein synthesis. They don't even work. Um, you know, and keep in mind, this person makes, sells, and endorses uh, protein supplements, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I think protein supplements can have their place, you know, if you need them for convenience, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think what we have to keep in mind uh, as long as we're being sane about it and you're literally not trying to do something like one meal a day, like someone's like, well, I get all my protein in one big meal and, and no others, I don't think that that's optimal, okay? And, but again, that's going to the extremes, you know, that's taking something like, look, it looks like we can have a much longer, more robust uh, response. You know, and keep in mind, all these studies on, on protein synthesis and timing and things tend to be done on fasted people. All right, they're fasted, so they're really only showing what's happening with the first meal. All right, the thing to think about with a, with a lot of this timing, yeah, we can digest protein over, over many, many, many hours, okay? We are still absorbing food 24 hours after we eat it. Now, the other thing to think about, too, you know, as far as the protein goes, people are like, well, what about people who, who are intermittent fasting? And um, I would say that if you're, if you're consuming slower digesting proteins, and you're eating a pretty clean diet with a lot of fiber, that's, the fiber itself is going to slow down your absorption of everything. Okay? In fact, people who really try to handle appetite and regulate body composition, eating higher fiber and combining it with intermittent fasting and maybe keeping protein a little higher, it could actually be of great benefit. It could be of great benefit. So uh, again, there's a lot of merit to that. You know, even for people who are trying to, to lean bulk, and I've said in the past, I, well, I don't know that intermittent fasting is great for lean bulking. Um, and I'm going to say at this point, at this juncture, actually, I think it's pretty decent because at the end of the day, my concerns used to be, well, protein timing. But honestly, again, people obsess over the protein timing and it just doesn't matter that much. So you come back over and let's say you're using that sort of approach and your protein is still spaced out through it. You have protein sufficiency, like you're hitting that target number, that 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight. So for someone like me, that's 150 grams of protein, right? And at that point, we don't even care so much about protein quality. Again, up to an extent, obviously, you don't want something with the lowest possible bioavailability. You know, maybe wheat protein for 100% of your protein wouldn't be good. Again, we can make general rules and say these things don't matter to a great extent until you go to crazy extremes and try to make them matter, right? Do you see where I'm going with that? You know, you can make that sort of argument with these things. If you force all of your protein into a single meal per day and you only have one meal, okay, at that point, protein timing could become slightly important and that could become a small negative. See where I'm going? But you had to create an extreme situation for that to occur. Uh, the other thing then would be the same thing with protein quality. We can make that statement and say, eh, at that point, once you start hitting those numbers, it doesn't matter whether it's, it's, it's whey or soy or beef or whatever at that point. What I'm not saying is find the most incomplete, lowest bioavailable proteins you can. 
you know, gelatin, wheat, things like that. Okay, fine. But again, you're taking these two crazy extremes. And people love to use those as counter arguments. That is not practical and it's not a sign of intelligence <laughs> at all. People like to think that they're being clever when they do that. All right, but at the end of the day, look, I think people make too big of a deal about protein timing. Um, and that's not even the way humans have, have evolved and developed, right? We oftentimes went a long periods of time without significant proteins and had to get oftentimes several days worth of our protein at once. Okay? Because again, if you think in terms of, well, let's say people were on really low protein, even a calorie deficit, and then the tribe or whatever made a big animal kill, do you really think they got that every day? And people didn't always have refrigeration and they weren't always in cold climates. Like, you can't leave that meat three days. Even you could, but it's one reason a lot of times jerkies and curing and stuff were invented to, to allow that. But, you know, oftentimes, before we learned to do those things, it was it was large amounts of protein at once. And that might have to last you for days. And yet people still survived and thrived. Again, we could access the protein. And the experimental data tends to confirm this, that if a large amount of protein is consumed at once, you just get a longer muscle protein synthesis. It just continues longer. Again, people make much to do about nothing. They make much to do about nothing instead of focusing on the things that matter, you know, and you get people who they don't have other stuff optimized and they're worrying about, am I getting the exact number of perfectly spaced protein meals? Am I keeping muscle protein synthesis elevated? And you look at their training, their training isn't perfect. So why would they care? I tell you right now, running non-optimal training, non-optimal sleep, and trying to focus on those things, you're gonna make less muscle growth than someone who still just did one big protein feeding a day, which I don't even recommend, but they got their training dialed in. They got their recovery dialed in. Keep in mind that training is the stimulator of muscle growth, right? Adding more protein, uh, things like that, up to a certain point, we're only talking about very, very, very small differences in muscle growth, very, very small you actually get much more just by optimizing your training. Like if you do comparisons in the lab of protein intakes of people who maybe could use another 50 grams versus the people who take that 50 grams, you compare that difference in muscle growth plotted over time versus simply optimizing volume and taking sets closer to failure. Look which one in the lab produces more muscle growth, the training side. And again, I'm not saying none of this stuff matters. I'm saying it probably matters a lot less than you think it does. It may not be enough of a difference to matter. Again, are you consuming sufficient protein? Is your diet balanced? Those are the things that you need to be looking at first and foremost with protein. Anything else is, is, is arguably of lesser importance and possibly of no importance. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.